Hello guys, welcome to Ms. Electronics. So in today's episode, I'm going to show you how you can convert your normal battery operated trimmer to run on USB. Now, I know there are a lot of other videos showing how you can do the same thing, but you know, like most of the videos, they are doing it wrong. So let me tell you what they are doing wrong and how you can convert it in the proper way. Now, if you are like me, who uses the trimmer a lot, chances are you have at least one trimmer lying around in your home. You know, if not just because the battery has failed and you just move on to a new trimmer. So if that is the issue with your old trimmer, then just try this hack. Who knows when it will come handy. Now this particular trimmer is made by a brand called Clickon. You can see it's uh, rated for 3 watts at 5 watts. That is the input power for charging. So I think I purchased this thing like 5 years ago and nearly 6 months ago the battery was actually starting to show its age because I was hardly getting 5 minutes of runtime from it no matter how long I keep it for charging so at that time instead of just throwing away in the dustbin so uh, I decided to convert it to USB so that it will get a new life just reducing the e-waste so basically I'm against all these e-waste now there are a lot of good things that can be done from these e-waste because a lot of things that I get personally are classified as e-waste but I make good use of them so enough of talking let me just tell you what this thing is so this was actually supposed to run on just two uh, nickel metal hydrate rechargeable batteries you know triple a kind of type and uh, when this thing died off instead of trying to purchase a new battery or new one i was just thinking okay why can't i just make a usb and that is the end result so when i tried doing that i just searched on youtube just like you did right now and i have seen a lot of people uh, doing the same thing but what they are doing is they are they, sometimes they take chargers like this one old chargers like this one or sometimes they will use usb cables like leftover usb cable like this one and what they do is they simply cut it strip it take the red and black wire basically the power wire solder it straight to the motor and voila you got yourself a usb powered trimmer and technically it works because although these motors are designed to run on three volts uh, Precisely speaking, these one these rechargeable batteries are like 1.2 volts, so not even 3 volts, but they are designed for 3 volts. You can power it with 5 volts as well. Nothing is going to uh, be a problem in that case. It's just a mechanical load, isn't it? Now, if you're planning to use it like this, like with an adapter, like mains powered adapter or something, then chances are you can do it that way as well because that is the most easiest way you can get it done. But the problem will start as soon as you decide to go on with a power bank because unlike the tough mobile chargers the power banks are actually delicate components these are not designed for such rough application even though they will mention every good things about it like they have noise very high noise protection and everything chances are for they are rated for like those protections are actually there for few minutes of use like not basically not for a very prolonged application like for the case of a trimmer so the issue is that these things are actually an inductee load there is a motor inside and when you are powering it up you are basically powering an inductee load straight from your power bank and the motor is going to create a lot of noise and that is the reason why most of the time there is a small capacitor that is connected across the, uh, across the motor terminals that is to avoid that is to prevent the noise somewhat so that it does not go back to the power source so uh, when you're connecting it straight to the power bank the power bank is going to see all those noise that is coming from the motor if you connect it to a cro you can actually see the current waveform and the voltage waveform. it's not going to be pure dc straight line it's going to be filled with a lot of noise specifically the motor noise so enough of talking let me show you what's inside first so conveniently enough here in this time i have a proper cable that uh, one side is the usb and the other side is a dc barrel jack and that is the case of my trimmer so if you don't have a cable like that no need to worry because you can always cut a piece of wire and let it stay inside so the only thing is that you will have a cable dangling around every time if that is not a problem for you if that doesn't bother you a lot then you can follow it this way no problem so what if your trimmer comes with an ac input instead of a dc jack it's very simple you can always purchase these kind of micro usb power connectors now these are available at around 5 rupees per piece you can buy it online or from electronic shops as well and it comes with two wires black and red you can just connect it straight to the circuit as i have shown you guys in the in the schematic all you need to do is make use of any existing holes or you need to drill your own hole 
to fit this connector inside the trimmer. Then you can use any micro USB connector. You know, it's basically an input, 5 volt input. So any connector will work in that case. So this is also an option. And let me just power it and show you. And the reason why I'm tearing this one down is not because I want to make this particular video. It's just because the switch in this one has damaged. It's not making good contact any longer. As I said, it's starting to show its age. So I want to replace the switch as well. So you can see 5 volts at 0 amps and I'm not sure how perfectly it's going to run because of switch issue as I mentioned. So let me turn it on. See that is the problem. If I press on the switch it's going to run. So there is a small issue with the switch. I need to fix the switch. See now it's spinning up. Yeah there it is. And you can see the power consumption is around 500 milliamps and it went up to 2 point something watts over there. So that is the power consumption of this thing. Now let's move on to the teardown of this unit. You don't really have a little bit, so you're not going to see any of those hairs or anything. So, as I said, this is just a DIY method of doing things. You can always buy a brand new uh, trimmer if you wish, but you know, it's just very old trimmer is going to be uh, a lamp thing. So if you can avoid it, it's better to do it safely because that way you can protect your future, um, the matter for our future buried as well. So, this tool is actually tight. So let me open it and show you what's inside. So this right here, guys, is the internals i hope you guys can see that so i just made use of the existing circuit board for the connections i didn't put any custom pcb or anything so this is the dc barrel jack input side and let me take out the motor and the whole thing so that you get a better view i know the video is getting longer for you know for the topic but that's the thing of this channel i like to explain things so let me take out the whole circuit board and that right there guys is the circuit board so as you guys can see this is the motor that spins the movable head which is this one over here so it's basically it's, it's vibrating this thing back and forth like that so it cuts your hair so this is the motor and it has an uh, kind of an off center shaft you know, eccentrics or something I am not sure about the word but this right here guys is a modification that I made so previously this was not there all of this thing except these two resistors and this diode these were there at the time i got this thing from the factory so these two capacitors and behind this capacitor there is a 3.3 volt regulator so previously this position was populated with two triple a nickel metal hydride batteries which are the batteries of course and what i have done here is very uh, is very simple since i have this connector i made use of it and at the input side itself, I have provided a 16 volt 470 micro capacitor. The uh, capacitor is actually parallel to the inputs of these two 3.3 volt regulators. Now it's actually on the heat sink, and the output is going straight to the motor through this switch. And now the switch is having some issues, so I need to fix the switch. But I will not make a video, it's a very simple process, so no video is required for that. And at the output side, I have another 16 volt 470 microfarad electrolytic capacitor connected. You know just to give it a buffer buffing effect when sudden current spikes are happening because sometimes when the motor gets jammed due to hair or something you know it's it, it will draw like a sudden spike of current from the power bank so it, it's better to keep a couple of capacitors probably a larger value if you can find it and in this one i don't have that smaller value capacitor that is across the uh, you know motor that i mentioned previously it's, it's just because i didn't have that at the time when i made it and there is one more reason why there are two of these in here because as, as you have already seen the normal power consumption like normal power consumption is just 500 something milliamps so it's not going to be a problem because this can actually handle one amp each and it can go up to 15 volts at the input side so this gives me an added advantage that i can not just power it with 5 volts i can power it with up to 15 volts at the input side so that gives me another advantage and these are the advantages over the other circuits that you find online as I said, there are a lot of other people doing straight connection. And one more advantage is that, oh, like I digress. So the reason why I have two over here is because let me show you the circuit diagram as well. So this right here, guys, is the circuit diagram. It's very simple. This is the 16 volt, 16 volt or 70 microfarads. Same as this one, 16 volt or 70 microfarad, and this can be a hundred and up. It's actually good to keep it a lower value, 100 enough. 
and these two are not present at the moment because I didn't have them when I at the time when I built this thing and the input is connected to a 3.3 regulators two of them in parallel I will go straight to the motor through a switch that's it so as I said the reason why it has two of them in parallel is because you know at some times when the motor uh, is running under load it actually draws around one amps of current from the input side so if you are using just one of them it cannot handle that one amps of current for a prolonged period of time even with the heat sink it was getting turned off because this thing has the added advantage of uh, our heat protection our current protection as well so because of this protection circuit that is built inside the IC if you try to draw more than one amps of current a single uh, IC will try to shut down or limit the current that is flowing to the motor that means your trimmer is either going to be slowed down or it's going to be turned off completely now by adding one more in parallel I can actually circumvent that by having you know more current because two of them will par in parallel will give around 2 amps of current so that's the reason why I ended up having multiple 3.3 volt regulators in my circuit so if you are following this circuit you don't necessarily have to use multiple of these in parallel just like I did you always can find a single 3.3 volt regulator with more than 1 amps of current you know the non SMD version of these regulators and of course you can use 5 volt regulators as well then it will be the equivalent of having a direct connection but still you will get the advantage of all the current limitation the uh, over current shutdown and other things and basically you can power it with up to 15 volts at the input side as well so that is one more advantage now as I said if you connect more capacitance like smaller capacitance it will help you to protect the power banks not these kind of all cheap power banks I'm talking about proper expensive power banks like these ones so if you have those capacitors connected in parallel it would have much helpful for the uh, power banks as well because that smaller value capacitor will eliminate the sparks to some extent I'm not saying that it will 100% eliminate the risk of uh, damaging your product but it will reduce the risk a lot now these components this particular resistor is for the LED and and that particular diode and this resistor is it was for the battery that was once in there and the diode is to protect the voltage going back to the DC jack and the resistor is for the current limiter uh, and since these two are not uh, being used in the circuit that is the reason why I solely ignored it in this schematic diagram as well this particular resistor is not even connected it's open on one side I'll show you that it is desoldered on one side I have just took it away and as I said this is why I didn't mention it in the schematic as well so as I said uh, you can f you can use a non SMD version of these 3.3 regulators as well which will give you a benefit the same benefit over current or, or high temperature all the benefits with much less complexity and you can see I have used an old used solder braid for desoldering the shall I say for making the connection to the motor as well because it's you know I'm always a fan of being repurposing old like useless things so yeah I hope I have covered everything in this video uh, now if you have any doubts you can always ask me in the comments below and now as I said in the beginning I shall show a clip which will show you how much noise this thing generates and how that noise is going to affect the power bank basically so yeah on to that video now hey guys just to give you uh, an idea about how much noise it generates just take a look at this LED over here you can see with when the switch is off as I said the switch is having some issue that's why this LED is on but the motor is off because the LED is getting power directly from the AC input so uh, you can see the light blue light in here it glows perfectly fine now as soon as I move around the switch you can see the blue light gets uh, a lot of flickering let me just show you that I'm going to move the switch so you guys can see how the even this LED you can see how this LED is getting affected by the noise see that power bank LED and this one over here that is the reason guys this is why I said this uh, you know this is the reason why I said you better provide a separate capacitor at the motor side and at the input side as well just like I see I have shown you in the schematic and this is the same reason why I said do not follow what the other youtubers are saying like connect it straight to the motor 
now even with all these uh, extra capacitors and bits and pieces you can still see how much noise the uh, device is actually sending back to the power source this power bank is actually getting a lot of noise back from the motor itself and you guys have visually seen it from the variation of the led light intensity over here and even this led over here as well so do not connect your power bank straight to your any motor load although it greatly depends on how good your power bank led is how good it is in withstanding all these noise but generally I, i'll say avoid connecting inductive loads to your power bank it's not good for the uh, longer healthier life so that's it for today's video thanks for watching and see you in another episode